This is a paid advertisement on behalf of Isotropic. What's going on guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital and we're here with Bob Fast, CEO and Director of Isotropic. Pleasure to have you on today, Bob. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. Nice to see you. Yes, excited to be talking about the company. So could you begin by telling us the story of Isotropic, what inspired the company's founding and how did your background lead to take on the CEO role in this breast cancer imaging space? I think that's a really good question. Uh, I was introduced to breast CT to a friend of mine, and uh, he introduced me to a doctor in Oklahoma City that had been working on a business plan and looking at this technology. Uh, he's currently on our, on our advisory. His name's Dr. Uh, Craig Shimashanke. We got together, and that led to discussions with the inventor, Dr. John Boone, at UC Davis Medical Center. John is a medical physicist and had a... Uh, a team of students that uh, built uh, four versions of breast CT uh, and uh, tested uh, the second and the fourth uh, with uh, multi-million dollar clinical trials on the fourth unit. And that unit is still in the radiology department at UC Davis. So I, uh, I, that, that whole uh, initial discussion led to meetings at Davis. Uh, John Boone put together a, a team of scientists and clinical people we uh, spent three days uh, at UC Davis and the last day at John's house. But during that time, we talked about the commercialization. It was clear that they felt that a major would ultimately license this technology uh, once they proved it up. Uh, they were several years into it at this point, uh, and they were already on the fourth iteration. And uh, they felt, well, maybe the people who control the market, uh, the big, you know, the big uh, four or five companies in the world, Siemens, GE Health and others, uh, certainly, uh, uh, you know, there's several big companies in, in this space. They already had a, a very mature market and maybe they weren't too, they weren't going to be in a big hurry to have their very secure, very mature market disrupted by this technology, which is what it was designed to do. So that led to, I think, John looking at this as, as a timeline. He's thinking about his age. He's thinking about how long they've been involved. It's a very serious legacy project, and uh, we uh, we just got along. We certainly I, I had a plan together with uh, uh, Dr. Shimshaki, and we presented the plan. At the end of the second day, uh, the senior radiologist took me down to the radiology department in the hospital uh, to where breast CT was, and she showed me a patient workup. And you asked me why I got involved and what really excited me about getting involved. She showed me a workup and she showed me what mammography looked like with this patient, then digital breast tomosynthesis, slightly 3D mammography, then ultrasound, then MRI. Then there was a 10 second scan, a contrast enhanced 10 second scan of breast CT. On the first, you could see on MRI where this, where this lesion was. Uh, at that point, they didn't know if it was cancer because they hadn't done pathology. They took a 10 second test. They now know that this patient has breast cancer but the actual lesion, which was quite a small lesion, lit up like a Christmas tree light. It was pretty clear. And she, I looked at her and I said, well, it's very clear. And she says, yeah, Bob, a first year radiology student is going to take my job in the future. That's how easy it is to see this with breast CT. So talk about real me. And, and that's exactly what happened. She just got, she just really, I just, I, I, you know, I'm going, this has got to happen. So, you know, I didn't have any formal education in this space. I certainly had been involved in a number of developments, technology developments, right through from development, financing, manufacturing, and going to the market. I was involved, I had partners like DuPont. I had the former president of Exxon running a company, a, really a, a technology company, a water treatment company in Houston. I've been involved in all kinds of technologies that were startups. So I, I'm not a stranger to uh, raising capital, taking on challenges, and certainly had the confidence I owned a personnel agency, and I think that was a great training ground for me to learn how to speak to people, how to uh, make my case, and ultimately that's what I did. So I, I'm a committed guy. Everybody that I that I approached could see that, and uh, I picked projects that really had where one on one equaled more than two, and that's really something I've done all my life. Awesome! Thanks for sharing your background there. So now let's talk about your latest announcement. So. The latest announcement states that IsoView is now the first breast CT system to offer a patent-pending personalized radiation dose 
via an optical pre-scan. Could you walk us through the science and patient benefit behind that innovation and how it differentiates ISOVIEW in the market? Well, I would say, first of all, that no one else has it. So that differentiates us in the market right away. Uh, but, you know, what this is, uh, you know, without getting into a really scientific explanation, from a patient standpoint, before the actual scan, uh, the cameras in ISOVIEW um, the ICU's imaging table perform a radiation uh, pre-scan, which means they actually take a scan without radiation, and that really is a measurement of mass and size of the, of the breast. So the pre-scan uh, data is evaluated and, uh, of the breast, and, and it uses algorithms uh, developed at UC Davis, uh, where breast CT was founded and developed to then, then essentially use that to uh, determine the dose size. And it's a percentage, uh, so it would be what I would call a customized radiation dose uh, results from that pre-scan. Um, so this is a patent-pending uh, feature uh, that we feel adds a ton of value uh, to breast CT, uh, as well as it pertains to personalized imaging trends that are driving the expansion, and we expect will drive the expansion of breast CT imaging in the market in the future. Very interesting. So, you know, what is the funding requirement for the company for the next 12 to 18 months? And how do you intend to allocate that? Well, I would say in simple terms, uh, we are looking at eight to $10 million, depending on, on the cost of the capital, but 8 million at least net. Uh, and that capital will probably be utilized over the first nine to 12 months uh, to build three devices, three breast CT devices, uh, certifying those devices, uh, putting the capital together to begin an FDA study, putting those devices in three hospitals in the United States and doing everything we need to start and drive the study for the first year. Uh, we will build a, a fourth device for a UK partner and begin a CE mark process. And we'll put two other devices right now, we're planning two other devices in other countries where we can create data, uh, ex maybe possibly even accelerate the CE mark uh, and uh, and move from there. We think the FDA study is going to be 42 months, three and a half years, and we think the CE mark will be under two years. So we want to build data, accelerate CE mark, and time to the market in uh, uh, in several countries in the world before we actually get FDA approval. Great plan. So in terms of you know the broader breast imaging landscape, you've secured exclusive rights to a patent on computer aided diagnosis for breast CT and launched AI content efforts via breastct.com, exploring ISOVIEW's competitive positioning. How do you see the software, AI and imaging hardware components working together in your business model? And where do you see recurring revenue leverage beyond device sales? Well, that's a good question. I, I think initially, you know, we would tell you right now that that breast CT from, uh, from the clinical trials, not studies at UC Davis, and there's been multi-million dollars in trials there, that breast CT is, is really MRI capable and quality and comparable. So the first thing I would say about computer-aided diagnostic uh, capability is that it's gonna improve an already very potent breast CT capability, first and foremost. So no matter how good we get, we can be better, no different than everything else that's on the market. So this, we've already got a huge advantage and this will give us an even greater advantage. And um, I, I think that we will add this technology to uh, to our customers once we get a certain number of them in the field. We want to get our units in the field, make sure that they're well operating efficiently, properly, economically. Then we plan to add other indications of use. We will apply to for other indications of use along the way. These are probably mostly software uh, re related, so they will not have the same bar as the initial device approval process. Uh, we expect that those will be what they call 510K editions, uh, which are typically four to six month editions. So we expect to add these as we go. So we, you know, we could potentially add this as an incentive upfront for early adopters. We're not quite sure exactly how we're gonna use it, but we have it to use at our disposal. Uh, we will have to move this into the approval process as well. So it will certainly be a later later date, but uh, you know, we will you know, answer your question about you know, where, where is the AI taking us and what will be the, the you know, uh, other products in the future and, you know, reoccurring revenue scenarios. We have right now identified 14 indications of use. As I said, 
you know, the hardware aspect is ISOView. There will be other hardware devices, but uh, probably eight or 10 of the uh, products or services that will create, you know, more service for, for, for patients, uh, more revenue for, for hospitals and clinics and people who buy and, and use ISOView and more reoccurring revenue scenarios for the company uh, will be probably about eight of those uh, uh, indications of use will be software. The rest will be hardware, biopsy, and new products. So, you know, right now we're at debt, we're, we're building additional products uh, and they're being developed uh, and, and funding is in place for those already. And we'll, we'll be talking a lot more about that in the coming months. As you look into 2026 and beyond, what are the biggest regulatory, clinical, or market risks you see for IsoView's commercial rollout? And what strategies is a company putting into place to mitigate them? Well, first and foremost, I'd say that, uh, you know, that the, the first risk is capital. I think with capital, uh, you know, the FDA, I would say F capital, then FDA approval, then CE approval, and possibly tariffs could play some role in future. It's a little undecided. I think the whole world's a little upside down on that front, but we plan to manufacture in the U.S. where we'll have the best advantage. Uh, but when we ship to other countries, we're not sure that will affect our, our costs. So that's, that's a potential risk. But I think initially it's capital. So, you know, with capital in hand, we will seek and secure necessary approvals for, uh, you know, to commercialize ISOView. So with capital, uh, I think we're pretty confident now. We've had two runs through with the FDA. We've been at this for about four years. We now have, uh, uh, I think, alignment with the AV, which we didn't have before. So, you know, the, the other scenario is that, uh, you know, the company has actually turned down financings already, you know, high cost capital financings from invest, investment banking sources, simply because our market cap was so low and it would have, it would have doubled or tripled the, the market cap uh, or the dilution to existing shareholders. So we've only been doing funding that uh, has allowed us to achieve really important milestones. And that really is FDA related and product development related. So, you know, at this stage of the game, being aligned with FDA has given us the ability now to complete a business plan, complete a financial model, provide comfort level to the kind of investment partners that we want. We want a partner that will fund this thing, that will help us market this thing, will help us uh, set up distribution in various countries, we want to treat the world as a sort of a franchise and we're looking for partners. And I think we're heading down that path and I think that we're getting very close to it. So uh, I believe that uh, the, the, the risk factors all stem from funding. Uh, I think we've been at this long enough and we know what we have. This is the fifth iteration. I have used the fifth iteration. We know what it does. We know what it can do. Uh, the people that we're putting in front of for approval know what it is and know what it can do. So I think we just have to get at it and start these studies and move ahead. And that's what we aim to do. It's a very exciting time for the business. And uh, this is our first video, but we'll be doing many more. And uh, it's been a pleasure covering the story so far. So exciting times ahead. Best of luck. And we'll have to have you back on for more updates as they arrive. Appreciate that, Aaron. Look forward to it.